it takes time always to come here and be with us. So you know how it is in high school when you're 11th and 12th grade, you're getting ready for college, you have so many things to do. But even then, he has helped me and Jagmeet also. From here, Jagmeet. Um, they both have been working with me on this program and they've helped me so much. And I can't forget all my friends over there, all especially all the girls in the front row, they've been helping me. Where's Priyanka? I cannot do this program without her. She's my, and she's of course sitting all the way to the end. And the back. Can you please stand up? I really think I cannot do all the things I do without Priyanka. She really helps me out with planning the events and everything. So I'm grateful, Priyanka, and I'm grateful for all these kids. Oh, I need my, all my friends need to come down, please. I see some of my friends up there. Please come down. Everybody has to come sit on the floor, please, because you don't want to get hurt. Let the parents... Good morning, everyone. Namaste. To see such talent uh, from our teachers is very inspiring. And with our next, speak next speaker, inspiration will be even further. I, along with TGK Live, am honored and pleased to welcome Mr. Simon Dennis as our next presentation. Mr. Dennis is an entrepreneur in the nonprofit sector who has become dedicated to bringing inner transformations such as story change and consciousness shift to the forefront of our work for justice and sustainability. He is the founding director of the Center, Center for Transformational Practice, where he practices sustainable living, conducts educational and spiritual programs, and networks in broader and networks broader in the broader region. Prior to this, he founded the Transformational Capacity Project and co-founded Cover Home Repair, Transition Fine Villages, Villages, and Upper Valley Apple Court. After spending 10 years creating and leading Cover, Simon, Simon became deeply inspired by the All World Guided Varyana, an Indian social movement that holds that the new and auspicious era of human history will arrive on the basis of simple living and high thinking. Following his passion, he spent a year in India writing Thought Revolution, a book about, the, about that movement and the philosophy and vision of its founder, Sri Ram Sharmacharya. Shortly after returning from India, he was elected to the select board in his hometown of Hartford, North Vermont, where he now serves the second term. His work emphasizes the centrality of the rise and fall of human consciousness in human affairs and the power of collective leadership to imagine and carry out the solutions to the challenges we now confront. With his great knowledge and human leadership, I would like everyone to join me in welcoming Mr. Dennis to UGK Alliance. Who are the people who 
are taking the pledge today? Or, can you put up your hand? If you're... Okay. Okay, honestly, I feel that you all are to be congratulated and appreciated very deeply. Yes. Uh, I, I, uh, I see that it is mostly women, the women in the front row. That is, the, that is my understanding of the way it is in this 21st century. That's also the way it is for us in Vermont. The women are taking the leadership. I, uh, it's true that I had the good fortune to become connected with the. Please, please be seated. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I had the good fortune to become connected with the guy in Kipari in 2006, and um, I had the chance to go over and stay in India on a couple of occasions. And um, approximately five years ago, I had an extended stay, and that's when I got the chance to work on uh, delving more deeply into the thinking and the uh, understanding and philosophy of Gurudev. And, um, uh, and beginning to think about how it is that this particular insight and this particular transmission uh, can make its way into Western culture. So I'm, I'm also privileged to be here with, with three friends of mine here who are um, brainstorming with me, uh, Elizabeth, Karen, Claudia. We are all thinking about how it is that this, this specific insight that the consciousness shift and the raising of consciousness can be the foundation of our of the new era, how it can be the foundation of our ability to confront the kind of environmental, social, political crises that we're confronting now today. How, how we can put that in terms of strategic uh, and practical terms to employ that. Um, so we're thinking hard about those issues, um, and, uh, and, and, and many of us living together within the context of the Center for Transformational Practice, uh, growing our own food, and engaging in various sustainable, sustainable activities. Um, but uh, I um, am um, thinking about the move that uh, these youth are taking uh, today with regards to this particular commitment that they will be taking. Uh, and uh, it's a, it's a very, it's, to me it's a very significant move uh, and very unusual in our society today. Uh, we are today um, living within the context of enormous confusion, uh, which is to say that um, the confusion that we're seeing in our society is also something that we have within ourselves. We are also going through our days with a basic fundamental understanding, or we could say basic fundamental misunderstanding, of being separate from the environment with, within which we live, being separate from one another. And um, this is uh, uh, the journey from this particular state of confusion to a state of recognition of our interconnection, of our, of our fundamental oneness, as I look at as, as basically kind of a uh, su successive steps coming closer and closer to our own heart in this, in this spectrum of our own, of our own being. And my understanding of the pledges that we're going to be taking today uh, relating with um, the, the five areas that I mentioned all of them are essentially their basic value, the essence of these pledges, has to do with taking these steps closer to our own heart. This is by no means an easy business to engage in. This is a very, very challenging business to behave in. If we think about the word heart, we, we, um, we use the word heart also to mean like the heart of the artichoke, or the, or the heart of the matter, we talk about the heartwood, meaning the center, the core of, of our own being. This is the center or the core of our own being, also being the locus of our fundamental interconnection with the rest of the world, our fundamental oneness with the rest of the world. So here we are in the situation of navigating with a certain confusion about being separate and taking these steps towards recognizing our interconnectedness. Um, this takes a lot of courage. Um, why? Because as we move along these steps, there is this voice which comes up within us and says, hey, what about me? My separateness, my own identity. I, I also am an important person. This type of thing is true. But as we go, as we go deeper and deeper within the spectrum of our own being, more and more 
we are coming to coming into connection with a being and with a connectedness which is so far beyond our own reckoning of who we are that it can be quite frightening. So I think about this sometimes in terms of our relationship with thought. Have you ever noticed, and I ask a question to people taking the pledge today, have you ever noticed when one thought ends and before another thought begins, this gap that's in there. Of course, thoughts have a light span, right? The thought comes up, it begins, we think the thought, and then it ends. Then another thought comes up, we think the thought, and then it ends. So there must be a gap in between these thoughts. And have you, have you ever noticed just to stay in that place where there is no thought? Where there is just an empty space before, after one thought has ended, before the next thought has begun. And what I, want you, what I want to invite you to do, what I want to challenge you to do, is to think about the nature of that experience and to stay there. Notice your own reaction. In that silence of mind, is there a little bit of nervousness? Is there a little bit of agitation to say, oh, I have to get back to the next thought, I have to get back to the next thing, or is, are we having comfort to be able to just stay there for some period of time and say, I am happy to dwell here in this space of mind with no thought. I think about that moment in our inner life as being a bit of a crack. It's a crack through which our own brilliance has the chance to shine up. Our true nature has the ability to shine up through that crack and end up taking new forms of action, taking new forms of thought, taking new forms of behavior, all of this is, uh, takes, takes an enormous amount of courage. Now it is said, perhaps you've heard the quote, that um, in order that uh, our greatest fear is not of our inadequacy, our insufficiency, our greatest fear is of our strength and brilliance, which goes far beyond our, our wildest reckoning. This is true. This is, worth, this is worth thinking about. So when we are in that moment in our inner life, when we have no thought, and we are feeling the fear of watching our own brilliance shining out, that is when we can engage in some courage. That, to me, is the basis of our ability to, to fulfill these pledges that we are taking today. I want to give... Uh, one more example here. I was I was recently at a at a, at a gathering, and somebody that I bumped into said, um, "Oh, I don't eat sugar anymore. I've given up sugar." I said, "Oh, why did you do that?" He said, "I gave up sugar because I realized that every time I had an urge to eat something sweet, actually I was responding to some feelings that were coming up within me that I didn't want to confront. Instead of recognizing those feelings, I would have cookies." And then the feelings would come up again, and I would have another cookie here, maybe a chocolate bar, something like this, right? Chocolate bar, cookie is not the end of the world, but the gesture of turning away from those feelings that come up within you at that, at that moment of quietness, at that moment of stillness, is very, very important to pay attention to. So instead, you all are going to be engaging in uh, resisting these temptations. The temptation for to become uh, obsessed with the internet. This is a particular difficulty for me, myself, is uh, working on the computer and relating with email. I've realized the pervasiveness of this pull towards the, towards the email world. Now I'm learning, I'm going to be learning to, to get some distance from that as well, like all of you. Uh, but the key thing here is to develop the ability to sit with our own feelings, to sit with that space of empty mind, and therefore let out the brilliance that is within us. Now why is this important? As I said, we are in a um, particular historical moment in which, um, as Gurudev has explained to us, in which we are all called to develop this capacity. Um, perhaps I, I'm going to uh, see if I wrote down this quote here. I think I did. 
Rudev has written that the present era of transition is an emergency time, the results of which are to be fought collectively by all who care to save humanity. Um, this rec recognition of the gravity and the severity of the, of the um, environmental challenges, the social challenges, the political challenges that we're facing, economic, um, that was, uh, has been uh, coming up within Gurudev's writings since the 50s and, and throughout, um, more and more has been proven out by the, by the science that we have today. We now know that our um, uh, carbon content in the atmosphere has gone up above 350 parts per million, uh, and furthermore, we know it's now up to 400 parts per million, um, and furthermore, um, we know that we as a human culture are using resources at a rate which is twice what the planet can sustain. Did you all know that, by the way? Yeah, no. You knew that. No, I knew it. Okay. <laughs> So how is it possible that we could that we could use up resources at a rate which is twice what the planet can sustain? Seems like we have one planet, we're all living on the planet. How could we use twice as much as offered? Only by borrowing from the future. Borrow, we borrow from the future in the form of disturbing our weather patterns. We borrow from the future in terms of reducing the fertility of the land. We borrow from the future by means of contaminating our waters and our soil throughout the planet. These are all things that the future generations more and more are going to have to be relating with. And uh, the fundamental insight that in the West we have not yet come to recognize fully is that we cannot relate with these practices which are contaminating our planet without being able to tolerate our own internal brilliance. If we are afraid of how great and how brilliant we are, if every time something like this starts to shine up and we turn and say, I must have a cookie instead, we will not be able to confront the environmental problems that we are, going, that we are facing. We will not be able to preserve a healthy planet for future generations. And as Guru Dev says, and I hate to say this, we will not, uh, we will not be able to save humanity. Think about that. So, of course, taking a pledge and saying, I am going to engage in these disciplines despite the pervasive pull of perhaps my social group, the, the pull of society to pull me in a different direction, has always been a matter of personal development and personal um, evolution. However, today, it is also a planetary responsibility Today, our responsibility to take these pledges, to engage in these practices, goes beyond our responsibility to ourselves and those who we live with, let's say, people we live in the house. Today, it extends all the way to the whole, every corner of the planet. The third world, creatures living at the bottom of the ocean, uh, creatures living in, in uh, jungles in the Amazon, let us say, um, in the future, future generations. Everything depends upon our ability to embrace and welcome our true nature. So I just want to say one more thing about that. We, we, when I refer to um, this notion of our own brilliance, um, also I am referring to a great mystery. If we think about um, our interconnectedness is dwelling in our heart. Also within that notion is that in the depth of our own human being is the source of creation of not only this planet, but the whole universe. So imagine that for a second here. Think of all of the cultures that are taking place on other parts of the world the many, many cultures just uh, in, in uh, Asia, European cultures, incredible diversity of cultures in America that are populating this globe that we're on. And think about this globe within the context of our of 
our galaxy, one little tiny speck. And this galaxy too, a tiny, tiny speck in the massive, massive sweep of the universe. I know that you've seen these pictures, perhaps you can bring them to mind, some kind of, something which just helps to wake up to you the size and scope of this universe of, of which we are a tiny, tiny part. And yet, the original intelligence, the original source from which this universe is emerging is also dwelling in our own heart. You can probably imagine why it is so frightening to welcome that into our life. So think about that. You can probably wonder, you can probably imagine why when one thought ends and before another thought begins and we have a momentary opening by means of which we can look down, down, down into the deep of who, the depths of who we are that we might experience some sense of fear. Because we are part of this tradition, because we have these influences, because we have teachings to help us to help us say things like, yes, do engage in the study of uplifting literature, do, do sit for this. Yes, do engage in the uh, practice of serving our fellow human beings, do engage in service, do engage in the preservation of the planet. Because we are blessed in this way, we have a path by means of which we can little by little by little take these steps and little by little by little more and more open up to the, to the full scope of our, of our human potential. So we are uh, appreciating your conviction, your dedication to take this step. We are appreciating, we are looking to the, to the youth to, to help show the way. We are looking to the women, as I said before, to help show the way. Um, and, uh, and we are not leaving it to you either. We as adults also are engaging. We as adults also are by your side. We also are thinking of these things in the future. So thank you again for uh, uh, allowing me to share this.
and opening and centering into your heart. It might help to put your hand over your heart. And this is one of the ways that we have to connect with each other and ourselves, is to shine that light to all the places in your life that brought you here today, all the people that help you and love you and care for you, all the experiences that have lifted you up and given you inspiration and knowledge and wisdom. And we can let this light go to all of those places in an effort to connect and to infuse those places with the gratitude that we feel for the goodness that all these things have brought to us. And let us not forget to celebrate this love and this light and this connection that we have with each other and our experiences and the divinity that really infuses our lives. And let us show our celebration and open our eyes and lift your arms up, up, up high and stand on your tiptoes. And imagine all that light going to all of those places that you are so grateful for that help you become the beauty that you are. Stretch. <laughs> Wonderful. You are, are all so beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
As Swami Vivekananda said, neither philosophy, nor name, nor fame, nor learning its character that pave and squeeze through adamancy walls of difference. By this we mean that you can be as rich or as you have it, you can come from great descent, but if you don't have good character, you're not going to be your best self. When you exhibit self-control, a passion for learning, and kindness towards others, you are manifesting all of your true potential. In this oath, promise to always treat your body like the shrine it is and demonstrate confidence, which is the key for daily life. Your character is one of the first things that people know about you, so make sure it's the best that it can be.
Mona and uh, Jacob, who light the service candle. Vasanta Parvani, Navashukan, 
Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 